Since when am I Faust? Chapter 10, Part 3. Oh no. I glanced over the group swarming over the solar and lunar princesses, and my heart skipped a beat in fear. Outwardly, I did my best to hide any sense of discomfort, but it still didn't stop the hair on my neck from standing up, along with a very goofy-looking changeling as she tried to hide her amusement. My expression may have been too easy to read for her to need to taste my emotions. To my relief, when they opened the bag, it was literally just a comb and a blow dryer. That, I could handle. But if there were any chance of me looking like a rarity when she gets all caked up in face product, I'd be running for the hills. So sitting down at the desk that Lauren had introduced herself to me at, I willingly let Minuet do my hair and mane, much to her enjoyment. It seemed that ever since I first met her, she was constantly glancing up at my messy hairdo. Perhaps this would make her happy. But still though, what, what was all this for? After a few minutes of pondering the question, I gave up on trying to figure it out myself, and decided to ask Lyra in a hushed voice. So, what's going on? Quickly making a mental note, I noted that I needed to practice whispering in this body, because as soon as the question left my mouth, a sense of tension hung in the air. It wasn't so much from my attendance, but rather from some of Celestia's makeup ponies. They turned unanimously towards my direction, and some glared at me harshly. It was as if they thought I was the most insensitive person on the planet. What did I say? I don't know. One pony stepped forward, her face failing to hide any trace of disgust. It's Cadence's wedding day, the pony said. Her tone was filled with contempt, and there was a sense of nobility in her voice that I noticed, because the way that she talked reminded me of a stuck-up ass. The room went silent. Those who had seen me and have heard of me turned in fright as they waited for some type of judgment to occur, and I waited along with them in anticipation, because at that moment I could feel Lauren take control. That seemed almost out of reflex on her parts. She turned to the pony and gave a shallow smile. Oh, I was uninformed. Thank you, young one, she said. Her answer was clear and sweet, but for some reason the others in the room refused to make eye contact. They vigorously continued to work, doing so as if they were trying to avoid getting noticed. Perhaps it wasn't so much the words that she spoke, but what she said with her eyes. Well, someone needs a coffee. I teased, but got no response. Instead, I found myself suddenly in control again. Turning back, I looked at my reflection. Many would have just finished doing my hair. I still preferred the other way, but at the same time, I had to admit she did a damn good job. While looking in the mirror, Lyra brought over a white box with crimson trim and set it on the table. Minuet and Lilybreeze went to open it, but when they did, they gasped in surprise. Both stepped back with grins on their faces, and I soon found myself lured in by my curiosity. Confused about what seemed to shock them, I walked over to see what it was. When I looked in, my nerves spiked. I was dreadfully hoping no one saw me blushing because it was severely embarrassing. Inside the box, there was golden regalia with Faust's cutie mark. You ever have one of those moments when you're dying inside, but you can't show it because everyone else doesn't see the whole picture? That's how it was for me at that moment. Looking over at Lilybreeze, I could see a wide, smug smirk stretching across her face again. <sighs> Freaking changelings, they pick up on every emotion! Oh, what's wrong, Alex? Is it too girly for you? <sighs> oh, shut up, you old lady! That struck a nerve and we started to argue. The two of us were spouting nonsense and insults at each other. A vast internal war within our own mind. It must have looked odd from everyone else's perspective, because I was fairly sure we had a blank stare into space right now. Unfortunately for me, I kept on forgetting that I was up against an experienced trickster, and I often fell for her traps. In this instance, she used the argument to focus on her, and not the outside world. Lifting the objects out of the box and putting them on, she managed to slip everything into place as I continued to insist that we'd never wear it. It took me a second to notice that she had once again taken control and was prancing around as if to get back at me. I was both appalled and severely impressed that she managed to do that. However, inside I was still struggling with the thought. I wanted to rip off the stupid crown and toss it to the side, but on the other hand, part of me knew that it would only make things worse. It was clear that a lot of effort was put into making these things, and the more I inspected the new outfit, the more guilt I felt for feeling ready to throw it aside. I looked over to my three friends and gave them a warm smile. Thank you all. Please let the pony who made this know that I'm thrilled with it. Oh, it's a miracle he's becoming a mature human! Don't push it, Faust! Will do, Lauren! Lyra said as she gave a salute before trotting or pushing her way out of the room in search of the artist. Looking at myself now, I was pretty much done other than a few small things. For some reason, it seemed as if for a single moment, every pony stopped making noise. And that's the time my stomach decided to growl in hunger. Honestly, why do things always work out like that? It's as if some idiot with no storytelling skills was in charge of these events. 
The ponies simultaneously turned to find the source of the sound, and they found me. They took their time staring, as if they had all seen an anomaly for the first time. What? I missed dinner last night, okay? I tried to defend myself from their relentless gaze, but to no avail. Lily Breeze tapped me on the shoulder and asked if I wanted her to bring some food to the kitchens. I smiled and gave a quick nod. Little did I know how much I would have liked her to stay. Not even two minutes after she left, a filly ran through the doorway. She then erupted in a burst of green flames and Penelia jumped towards me. Lobin, you're back! She cheerfully said. A moment of silence passed and all the servants paled. It's a changing! Run! One mate shouted. Mass panic among the servants spread quickly, and they all began to run around aimlessly as they screamed at the top of their lungs. The vast mob of chaos was so distracting that I almost didn't notice the nymph that had run up to me and bonked me on the nose with a jump. Catch me if you can! She taunted. Now, I know the proper thing to do would have been to calm down the servants and keep order in the castle, but, well, I'm not one to resist a challenge. Nor do I ever do the proper thing. Oh, it's on! I exclaimed, and I jumped out of my seat and ran out of the room after that little rascal. As we were running through the halls and acting childish, Penelope kept on finding odd places to hide. Behind the curtains, on the ceiling, under the couch, and on my head. I don't even know how she managed to pull that one off, but somehow she made herself almost weightless. Once, the chase was on, but this time as we traveled through the halls, the commotion that we were causing didn't go unnoticed. Two guards came at us with their spears drawn and a slight look of fright in their eyes. Stop right there! They commanded me. The nymph and I stopped as they said, and I looked at the determination in the guard's eye. Deciding to play dumb, I leaned against the wall with a nonchalant attitude. Hey, what's up? The guard snarled. Tell us what you have done, you beast! He moved the spear forward to try and intimidate me. I looked around with a dumbfounded expression on my face. Finding no other people or ponies for them to be talking to, I turned back to them. Uh, you mean me? Yes! The guard answered. His friend closed in with his spear held ready. Now, Changeling, tell us what you have done with the princess's mother! I couldn't get the look of what the hell off of my face, and I'm sure neither could my counterpart. I'm right here, dipshit. She said, but it was safe to say that they didn't believe her. Instead, they tossed their spears against her neck. Don't play games with us, you think we're blind? I can see you scheming with your associate. The guard took a glance down at the whimpering nymph, and I couldn't help but feel frustrated with his attitude. With a mocking tone, I began to dramatically say... Oh, well, you've caught us. Playing tag with a child is obviously the evilest, most despicable, horrible thing I could do. I finished off with my hoof over my head, emphasizing my performance. The guard jabbed a spear forward. So you admit it then? I dropped my arm and gave him a half-lidded stare. You can't be that stupid. They're that stupid. I had said to myself, walking into the wedding hall. I had guards on either side of me, and Penelia sat on my back. We were both in shackles, and the guards led us in to present us to the princesses. I glanced at the guests sitting in their seats, and the wide-eyed shock that covered their faces. Twilight and her friends were stunned, speechless, and Luna was withholding her irritation at what she was seeing. Bound and shackled in chains, the guards pulled me along and up to the stage. I looked off to the side as a blush of embarrassment passed through me. When Celestia caught sight of me, she put a hoof over her mouth as she tried to keep from breaking into hysterics. Holding back caused tears to appear at the corners of her eyes, and I gave a snort. The two guards stepped forward, and knelt in front of Tia's position on the stage. Your Highnesses, we have found these two changelings in the castle. We have brought them here and are awaiting your command. What are your orders? Shining Armor, who was standing in his position on stage, was on the verge of hyperventilating as he saw what his guards had done. Twilight was standing beside him, and she reached out, putting a hoof on his shoulder to calm him down. With a bored expression, I leaned into view and said, Yo, Shining, you mind helping me out with these morons? I shrugged and motioned to Penelia on my back. She's a bit scared right now. The said nymph, curled up on my back, whimpered as she tried to hide in my mane. Her shackled hooves prevented her from getting a good grip, though. The captain was in the shakes as his frustration spiked and his eye twitched. Gathering his wits about him, Shining put a hoof on his chest and breathed out, calming himself down like a certain marriage shown his sister. Sighing, he stood up straight and shook his head as he held his hoof against his head. Looking down at his two troops, he said, Thank you both for your efforts to try to keep the castle secure. I understand your position, although I am ashamed to say that you are both mistaken. The guards looked up at the captain with confused expressions, then dread filled their souls as they realized what he was saying. Continuing his explanation, Shining said, Under the authority of the royal sisters in Queen Faust, this nymph and her elder sister are here as refugees. They are no threat to us. 
and we are to treat them as every pony else. This was already covered in the meeting last week, so if you will, please release them. The two guards looked back at me with fearful expressions, to which I smiled and waved my wing. They hurriedly ran over and began undoing the restraints. We are so sorry, they both said. I glanced up at Tia, who was obviously having fun with the ridiculous situations I always seemed to find myself in. Once Penny and I were free, the two guards almost ran out of the wedding hall. Their faces were beet red and they took the shackles with them. Shaking my head, I walked over and sat down beside Luna, placing the nymph in between us. The little cuddlebug looked up at the princess and began playing with her mane. Luna smiled as she looked down at the curious child. A moment later, she wrapped the nymph in her wing. Penny let out a little chirp of glee, and then the ceremony began. Twilight looked over at her brother and adjusted his uniform with her magic. Then the birds began singing. At the cue of the music, the doors to the wedding hall opened, and three crusaders skipped their way down the aisle, spreading flowers around the room. Immediately after, every pony's attention turned to the bride. Cadence walked with the music, almost danced with it. Her face shined a brilliant smile. Her eyes were purely locked down a shining armor as she stepped onto the stage to meet him. Finally, after all of the waiting, the two could now be married. Celestia teleported her cue cards away and thus began her parts. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to witness the union of Shining Armor and Princess Cadence. May we have the rings, please? Spike ran over and gave them the rings, and as they were placed upon their horns, Tia said, I pronounce you Mare and Colt. You may kiss the bride. Shining and Cadence almost leapt for each other as they shared their first kiss as a married couple. Confetti and sprinkles erupted from the ground and Pinkie Pie was jumping for joy. Rainbow shot out of the window, and a moment later, the sky lit up with a multitude of colors, which was closely followed by a resounding boom. I hadn't noticed it, but when Luna passed me a tissue, I realized I had been crying. I don't know if it was me or my other half, but the tears and sheer joy I felt was something that made all the troubles from earlier worth it. After the ceremony, when everyone was leaving for the reception hall, Tia walked out and spotted an out-of-breath pony standing not too far away from the double doors. With a sigh, the pony said, I've been searching for you all day. Tia smiled at the pony. Oh, hi, Elaine. Where have you been? The secretary simply grunted and then collapsed in a heap. Uh, she deserves a raise. Anywho, let's get on to our beautiful donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coltard, Jason Man, Darkseid, Only One Thing, and Dash of Evergreen. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rowland, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Mordred, Omicron Library, Will Chris Twinkie, Hadzaza, Riot Soul, Maverick, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.